25 past, we will get started. One, two, three, four, five. No, we can't. Oh, oh, oh yes, we, we do. Yes, Councillor Let's go. Okay, so we're on to item um, 10, 11. 11. Page 187. You can take the report of the red. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> oh. Any questions? Yeah, I'll, oh. okay, I'll move. But, um, no, that's fine. Do you want to move? Yeah. Pretty stretching for me. I'll second. I just have one question. Um, why did we use this template to report on the actions and the goals um, when in the plan it actually says we will use this template and it's different? We just felt that this template was a bit clearer. Yeah. <coughs> So you just decided to go for the traffic light approach? Yep. Okay. Yeah, five coloured traffic light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chaos More in the city. Okay. okay. The rain. Just um, a, another just another quick question. question. Yep. Yeah. Is is there any reason why the pools and the zoo are not included as part of the open <laughs> open <laughs> open space um, open space plan? Because they are sort of parks of a of a nature that's quite that seems to be quite similar to what we're developing with Sport Waikato in terms of using some of our fields and so forth. I can understand why the stadium and 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 um, and perhaps Seddon Park might be outside of that, but should should the pools and um, I, I wouldn't describe pools as open space. Um, the zoo potentially um, it was mainly the land that we hold under the Reserves Act, okay. um, which is pretty much our parks and open spaces. Some open spaces aren't held under the Reserves Act, um, such as some of our civic squares, etc. Uh, the other thing is Hamilton Gardens isn't, a, isn't, isn't in here yeah, either. That's true. So it's really relating to the implementation of the urban garden priority and the Hamilton plan. So um, so this is, a, this, this is just a high-level overview of progress on the implementation since it was developed in 2013. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Councillor Mallet? Uh, 191, <coughs> excuse me, 191. Uh, de uh, so the action, develop a local indigenous diver diverse biodiversity strategy, blah, 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 medium term. Um, comment, development of a local indigenous biodiversity strategy has been agreed with Waikato Regional Council and is to start 2016. Um, just explain what that means. It, it has already been agreed. Yeah, so that was part of the... Um agreed as part to resolve the Waikato Regional Council's appeal on the proposed district plan. They lodged an appeal relating to the... Um, so was there specifically somewhere in our district plan there's something that talks about biodiversity? Correct. And the Regional Council challenged that? Correct. And the, to resolve the appeal, um, the, there was an agreement to develop a local Indigenous biodiversity strategy and to start that by 2016. It's not unusual for local authorities to do that with regional councils. Yep. Um, my experience, having worked for a regional council in Auckland, um, the regional council would always work with a local council so you got an integrated approach because regional councils have the biosecurity functions and they also have regional <coughs> plan functions too, which often have um, biodiversity outcomes in them. Um, so you don't end up with a double up and you don't end up with... Um, a district council doing something different to the regional council. Okay, so somewhere in our district plan, there, so in our proposed district plan, uh, and we've agreed, or we lost the fight, or whatever you want to call it, we lost the, the, the there's an element of biodiversity. Correct. Okay. Good. Right, there are no further questions. I'll put that to the vote. That's been moved by Councillor Forsyth, seconded by who wish it the Mayor. All those in favour say aye. 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 Are there any against? Councillor Mallet is against. That's been carried. Thank you. Thank you. Right, item 12. Uh, this is the update on the city's um, uh, <coughs> social housing strategy, page 195. <coughs> Thanks, D and Lance. You can take the report as read. I'll move. Second. So was that Councillor Forsyth move, was it? Yes. Yeah. 
and second councillor Wilson. Are there any questions on the report? Pretty straightforward. Councillor Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Councillor Gallagher. She's coming back. Marty. We, um... You don't have to ask a question. Yeah. No, I don't. And I, I <laughs> given okay. not a requirement. No. Without wanting to pour rain on the parade, obviously this is Do a useful exercise. Uh, but the significance of council's withdrawal from a particular section of social housing is not lost on me, but I <coughs> look forward to that discussion so uh, you when that comes up at as a later Okay, item. so you don't have a question? No, I've decided I don't have a question. <laughs> 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 Excellent. <laughs> I have an Mallet? emotional response, Councilor but not Mallet, a question. do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Thank um, you, ask it. It's another one that's... Um, <laughs> it's another one of those where there is no budget allocated amount nil, so you add up all these things with no budget allocated, and I bet you they'd be, we'd be into millions of dollars, wouldn't we? If I may, through the chair, um, this plan will actually, it's being led by the third sector, and that's by their choice. That um, part of the council resolution as part of the de decision around the sale of the pension of housing was for a, um, a social housing plan to be developed. Um, I took that back, um, <coughs> those discussions back with the third sector uh, at the end of December last year, I think it was. Um, and did ask the question around whether uh, council should be leading that process or leading that plan development and got categorically told no, that, that the third sector want to um, actually drive uh, the development of this plan. So essentially uh, council, um, there's two senior staff reps that will sit as part of that governance mm -hmm. group and that's myself and um, Luke O'Dwyer. Um, ultimately we are a, a representative that will uh, sit alongside and within that governance group and, and give um, our, ensure that council's um, input is uh, put into the, the plan itself. So in, in the sense of the development of the plan that will be solely uh, carried by the third sector. Yeah but again, again we've got the same, I mean your time's not free, Luke's time's not free. If you're working on this you're not working on something else. Uh, we ha and it but won't the, be just you two. But the I mean, report doesn't say that. It says there's nil financial mm. implications because we have these time budgeted for. Yeah. There is not yes, budget yes. allocated amount nil financial stats with the financial stats. There is um, is not budget allocated. Doesn't oh sorry amount nil. So what does that mean? Sorry, which point are you on? Council? I'm on the I'm box. On the front page. On the box <coughs> oh, page 190. So there's no financial implications for the for the organisation as a whole, and yes, my time is accounted for, and so is Luke's, but it's minimal. Yeah, okay. and, 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 and you're right. And this one will, be, <coughs> I dare say, this one will be minimal. It will, will be small amounts of time, but um, it will be time altogether. All but uh, there's nothing truer than it all adds up. And I'm just concerned that we, <coughs> this is, that third, three or four of these things have come through now. We've got a. And we seem to have a policy of just not saying any, there's no cost to these things, but there is, and it is all part of... Okay, Councillor... Uh, sorry, it is all now. part of the um, uh, overhead stroke uh, management allocation of resources, and I just don't think it's being properly allocated. I don't know how we can manage something that we don't know, that we don't get any figures on. Through the Chair, I think I can take it up with my GM colleagues, just in terms of um, being clear on those particular parts of the report. Pardon? That part of the report is not clear, and I think that's leading to some confusion here. But it's not, I mean, there's been, I've, I've, I've picked up two or three of them. Yeah, I know, I've picked up two or three of them, mm. and there are more to come that have got uh -oh. nil. Yeah. I agree. Mm. And, could I just add another comment, um, Councillor uh, Mallett? In terms of the 10 year plan, when we talk about the budgeting for um, the entire organisation, we talk about the portfolio that sits with an example, um, yeah. these area community um, advisors and so forth, and what work program they'll undertake. So we manage it based on a budget within the cost centre and the work program that falls in with that. Now this is another way of looking at it, mm. where the individual parts have been extracted out. We don't have a cost allocation methodology to actually allocate that out, but we do manage those budgets quite tightly. And when we had the conversations with council leading up to the 10-year plan discussion, we did discuss what the budgets were for the delivery of the, the various programs within the community area. Okay. I guess my concern is that in terms of a <coughs> governance body, which we are, you know, there's a level of detail that we don't need to see, but there are decisions that could be made. We could say, no, we don't want to go ahead with this, stop it. How much do we save? Now, you can't answer that, can you? We, we could estimate that, because when we, when we budget staff time, we go through the proposed work program, we know that there's 
28 working hours, 16, 16 40 are actually productive because the rest is having annual leave and going to the toilet and having lunch and stuff like that. Um, so, so we actually do allocate those hours in, in a general sense to projects, and we also leave. But how, 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 how can we as a governance group make a rational decision on whether or not we go ahead with this <coughs> if we don't know any costs? Well, I mean, one, one of the issues is not just the, the price we get for selling the stuff or not, whatnot, or we, we, but if we're, what's the management cost and the overhead cost? You know, it's a huge, huge element of all of the costs within our organisation are overhead, and they get scattered around all over the place and hidden and all sorts of stuff. Um, but these are the times where we can challenge that, and we're given no information. And it's not, look, it just, you just happen to be the guy sitting in the yeah. question, well, twice it's been you guys yeah. sitting there when this one come up. But I don't know how we are, how we are able to make a decision. Or, you know, that, that side of the decision, the information is just not there for us. I yep. think... Sorry, As Richard said, this that would really be the granularity of mm. um, when you go into the operational budgets through the LTP and the annual plan process, so that you know that you know mm. the, the 16, 40 <coughs> working hours of each person is allocated this way and that, and, and you need to know what are those work, what's in those work programs. So. Presumably, you must have to have it. I mean. You have to manage D, and D has to manage yep. staff, yep. and you have to know what yep. they're spending their time on, yep. Yep. Um, and whether it's worthwhile or not. Yep. And um, how can you do it when you don't? Well, do you just have a feel or a feel for what's going on? Well, I we don't plan know. we plan ahead um, as much as we can, but you know, in local government, you do get things which just occur. Yep. Um, as so every business does. Yeah. So yep. you've got to allow for the, that contingency yep. or discretionary, but. Generally we're not talking about contingencies. We're, we're talking no. about things that we are being asked to approve. Yep. Yep. These aren't contingencies. So we budget staff hours for that, and that mm. goes through the LTP process. But it never gets to us here. Well, that depends on the granularity that councillors mm. want. So and this is a report on the update of that <coughs> work the that the members right. that, that's wanted correct. to see. Yep. And the, the update <coughs> is really saying there isn't much of an update at the moment. That's correct. Yeah. OK. All right, um, are there any further questions? This, has this been moved? This has been moved and seconded. Um, debate, anyone want to speak on the item? No? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Are there any against? <coughs> no, that's been carried. Thank you. Right, thanks, guys. Uh, item 13, page 198, Strategic Roundup Report. This is a standard report that comes to the committee. I'll move. Well, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Second. So it's getting late in the day now, you see, so seconded by the Deputy Mayor. <laughs> um, and I, be today, I believe we have an update on... <laughs> I'm just trying to work out. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I want you to... An update on... Don't we have something... Yeah, the child, the Waikato plan or something coming to the yeah, briefing? This one's got a budget. <laughs> OK, yes, people. Uh, that, that was exactly my question, actually. <laughs> the general manager has a comment. No, just, just really just to uh, add uh, through the chair that the <coughs> Waikato plan, there'll be an update given at the briefing uh, next week in the yes. public session. Yep. Um, just on the um, where that particular project is travelling. So it further expands on the points in the report here. Great, thank you. So we have... Oh. Right, so any questions? Councillor Mallet? We have a variation on a the theme here. Do we have a question, yes, Councillor Mallet? Yes, we do. Mallet? Yeah, what yeah. is your question? Do we have a you, you wait for it, it's going to blow you away. There is budget I'll allocated. Decide that. But it's not even shown. Yes, and there is budget dana, allocated. Dana, 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 dana. And I'm happy to provide that information offline. I don't have that with me. <laughs> Look, I think, um, I mean, in all seriousness, and I know you're serious, Councillor Mallet, you, you, you do raise a good point, and I know that in the past when we've had public art, um, items. Councillor Pascoe has asked for the entirety of costs to be of cost of maintenance <coughs> over, over life to be included in that. So, look, I think um, I'm going to go away and have a chat with um, Councillor Pascoe as the chair of finance, but um, the GM to look at. I mean, even if there's some oversight as, as to what budget is it coming out of, and it might be very difficult, as Lance was saying, to granulate it down, but. Um, I think there are some improvements that can be made. Well, the, well, the reality is that we have, well, as I've said before, massive yep. overheads in this place, okay. and we allocate so them. Time's not for speech. I'm, I'm siding, kind of siding with you here. I'm saying that I'm going to go away and try and, um, and talk to the GM and try and make some improvement in that area to accommodate the concerns that you've raised. So um, it's been moved by Councillor Wilson, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favour? I want to speak. 
Oh, you, oh sorry. Speaking, yes. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, and, and unfortunately it is late in the afternoon and again this, this particular roundup report, I'm glad it's coming to an open, open, open workshop. Well, just one open. Uh, and that open workshop is going to have an open discussion of the open <coughs> budget particularly around the Waikato plan, you know, the, the million dollar plan, what we've spent, what we're going to spend, what is the likely, the timeline, all of that, because th these particular items are incredibly important. They underscore the crucial leadership role being played by the mayoral forum, in my view that the mayoral forum needs to be very open in its processes, and there's some very, very positive things happening. But I do think, picking up Councillor Mallet, I do think on the Waikato plan, I think there's some really positive things. I think the appointment of people like Bill Wesley and Ken Tremaine, etc., uh, into that group is, is a very positive. I think they've got very, very good reputations, may I say. But I'm kind of looking forward to, in the workshop, uh, Mr General Manager, to, to going into some detail uh, on that, because I, I think, with respect, uh, all of these topics, particularly the Waikato Plan, deserve much more than just the cursory five minutes. And I know we're going to get an open workshop, and that's good. Thank you, Councillor. Any uh, further speakers? Now I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Are there any against? No, that's been carried. Thank you. Uh, item 14, <coughs> page 202. Uh, and this is the, an external <coughs> submission to the uh, Psychoactive Substances Regulatory Authority. And um, I want to thank those uh, elected members who were able, I know it was short notice, to come to the meeting uh, last week and give their feedback on the submission and we did make some changes. Um, I did email those changes to all elected members and um, I was able to catch up with Councillor King on the way out of that meeting as well. Um, there is just something that was missing off there under other comments, Aaron. I, um, we discussed uh, under 2.2, sorry, under the proposed process if uh, territorial authorities must confirm eligibility of an application, we asked for wording that, um, uh, that that information be supplied by the authority. At the moment it's just implied that it would be. We don't want to have um, uh, communications with any applicant. So if you can uh, add, yep, perhaps okay. under 2.2, HCC would need the following information to be provided by the authority. Yeah, we can make that change. Great, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Mallet, question? Yeah, um, I won't bring up that there is no budget allocated thing again, but it is there, not allocated. Um, my understanding is what we're doing here is we are saying we've got some areas so, that are sensitive. I just want to make sure I understand what we're approving. Um, and, but we're going to let the central authority take our uh, set of criteria and apply it. So it's it's totally removed from. So we 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 give the set of we say these are the rules. We want you to apply on our behalf. That's what we say. So we're totally hands off. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so Other than the fact that we set up the rules in the first place. So yeah, through the chair, council's responsibility here is to set the policy as yep. per the legislation. And what we're asking through this submission is that the authority make the decision based on that uh, so policy we, that we've been asked to set. So does that uh, mean we so won't have a, a department, quote unquote, for approving psychoactive um, a policy, uh, that is retailers? Correct. So we're suggesting that that's not a role that we'd like to take on. So, so we wouldn't have. We would have maybe you just keeping our our policy up to date and telling council, look. Four people have applied and they all got turned down, or they all got. But other than that, there's no staff member employed doing this. There's no, there's no, um, there's no hearings process that we will be going through. I mean, sorry, th these are submissions hoping to get an outcome, are they not? We don't know the finality. Yeah, I'm asking, is that what we're is that what we're hoping our submission will achieve? Yeah, so we don't know yet what it's going to do, yeah. or do we? Well, well, clearly we've got. We, yeah, I've got to understand what our submission is. So this is the thrust of our submission. Is that right? That is correct. So that's what we we will end up with. If, 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 so that's what we're recommending to the that's, that's, that's the, the basis of our submission, yes. Okay. So we'll have no um, overhead for managing the thing? I think minimal, to, be, to be clear to, to Councillor Mallet, there is two parts to it. That's, I think, um, Aaron has answered to your question, that's what we prefer. Yep. There is a second part to our submission that if we do have a role, and that's what, I guess, 2.1, uh, 2.2 2 .2 covers, that uh, we don't... Um, if, if we are asked to have a role, this is what we're saying would be 
how we'd like to see that. So our preference is we have no role, as, yep. as Aaron's answer, but if we are seen to have a role, it would be as in accordance with Section 2. Okay. Which would imply some resource required from staff okay. at some level to administer that part of our process, if that's what... So to be clear, we are... Uh, once this is approved, and if they agree, agree with that, we have nothing to do with it except for updating the, um, what do we call it, the policy. dangerous areas or whatever it's called, <coughs> yeah, uh, sensitive areas. Sensitive. That is okay. our preference in the policy mm -hmm. okay. and the risk submission. Okay. Um, so um, is it a question or you want that? No, no. I'm, I'm, I, when you're ready to um, yep. um, put the recommendation, I have a slight amendment. Well, like to make we this. corresponded over email that you were happy to have that in the motion. Oh, so you've changed the motion, have you? Well, I was just getting to that. Okay, all right. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, so count, um, Councillor Pascoe, just under E, um, uh, Councillor Pascoe, and I said, look, uh, happy to put this in the motion. Um, wants to change that local members of parliament be advised and then the changes and encouraged to and be encouraged and be encouraged to support and then HCC submission to the psychoactive yeah. substances etc. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Pascoe, did you want to move that? You can be the mover. I don't oh, know. I'm happy to, yeah, happy to move that with that. I'm happy to share this, this issue with you yeah. <laughs> and uh, second it by the Deputy Mayor. Um, did you want to speak? Uh, the Could I ask a question? Question, sure, yeah. How do we to be encouraged? Well, I, I assumed when I read E that we would be sending letters to the local MPs to advise them of what our, of, assuming this recommendation gets passed, that we would be sending a letter to the MPs advising them of Hamilton City Council's um, um, submission. And uh, I thought it was appropriate, given that we perhaps didn't get the support that we needed last time from some of our MPs, that we would try and be a little more persuasive in that letter to encourage them to support. So <coughs> whose, job, whose job is that going to be? I'm, I'm just trying to make see how this is all going to happen. Uh, well, I just assumed it would go in the letter. Um, if it, it needs to be signed by... Um, by the mayor or the chair of, um, uh, I, uh, normally it would be signed by a staff member, I would have thought, but, but if it's appropriate that it be signed by the chair of this committee or the mayor, um, I'm quite relaxed. Okay. Normal process, is that staff so, submitted? Yeah, through the chair, normal process is once we have um, submissions lodged and filed with the agencies, we um, email the uh, uh, members of parliament in Hamilton uh, to let them uh, aware of the issues that we have submitted on. So that's the normal process. So how are we going to encourage them? Because we are going to advise them anyway. No, I think my, my comment, um, 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 Councillor King, was that we would um, include in our note to them that we would encourage, them. we would, we would um, be seeking their support, support for our submission. Yeah, and the cover note or something. Yeah, yes, just so that it perhaps sends a message that might not have got sent in the past um, just to say that we're we're hopeful that they will be supportive of um, of 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 our submission. Yep. Yep. Is that okay? All right. Um, okay. So that's been moved and seconded. I'm going to put that to the vote. All those in favour? Right. Right. Any against? It's carried. Right. <coughs> uh, last item. Item. Oh, second to last item. Page two hundred six, item fifteen. Now, of course, this is this one's fallen outside of the process, the new process, hasn't it? Correct. Yeah. So you can take the report as read. So this is going to be a retrospective uh, approval if it gets approved. So um, are there any questions? <coughs> I'm happy to move. Thank I'll you. second. Councillor Pascoe. It's already gone, hasn't it? Yes. Yes, it has. Okay, so um, is there any debate? No, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Right. Is there any against? Right, That's more. carried. Thank you. Right, item 16, two, page 227. This is just the action list. And this outstanding submission list and the bylaw review and policy schedule. 
Councillor Just on the sustainable yeah. Hamilton strategy, as per the sustainability panel report, mm -hmm. I know the deputy chair of that apparently is coming to the community forum to talk to us, but I also understand that Jeanette Fitzsimmons Fitzsimons is going to re chairs prevent a chair's report. So yes. I think that probably just as a clarification, because yep. there's, there's a two step. There's one step that comes to community forum. The second step, of course, That's the right. chair's coming here. Might you just might want to add September. that to the <coughs> grid for a record. <coughs> Yep, sure. happy to add that. Okay, any but further questions? Uh, Councillor Pascoe? Yeah, just one other question on uh, page um, 229, the, the action list. Um, just a concern that we've got about 14 items there which have just got the words in, in progress after them. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if it would be appropriate that the GMs who are responsible for those could start putting some anticipated dates when they are likely to be reporting back on those, even if those dates subsequently need Change. to be um, taken forward. But it just means that it might just sit there for a long, long time if it's got the words in progress without yep. anybody um, following up and trying to pin a, a timeline down on. Yeah, thank you. All right, anything else? Sorry, is it accurate? I mean, I look at the cemeteries draft program, uh, sort of halfway down the thing. Plan adopted on the seventh strategy and policy committee, subject to action list. Reformatted plan to be incorporated and presented at the August council meeting for approval. So, in actual fact, that's simply uh, should you say to be at the August council meeting. It's done, isn't it? Well, at, at, at the point of this meeting here, that is the status. Uh, <coughs> come 28th or 29th of August, uh, once it's um, approved, then it will be removed. But so at this so stage, it's your not status would be awaiting approval at. August council meeting, wouldn't it? I mean, is it just people being lazy and updating this? That your wording is nice and succinct. Because <laughs> those are not hard things. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so I'll. Really, am I? I'm happy to move that. <laughs> A seconder. I'll second. Right. Oh, Councillor Pascoe. Any debate? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Any against? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you, that closes the meeting. <coughs> oh. <laughs>